Well, I think uh, all of us begin as writers. I, I wanted to be a writer from the time I was eight, long before I ever heard of jazz. Um, the question is, once you have that obsession, what is your subject going to be? And you often don't know for some time. It might become fiction, it might be nonfiction, and if it's nonfiction, it could go in any number of directions. Um, I didn't realize uh, what my subject was for quite some time. I thought I was, I knew I wanted to write criticism um, because I loved reading criticism, and uh, I just had a response to that and, and knew I had an ability for it. But I studied English literature and expected to be a literary critic. Jazz was something that I loved. It was an obsession of mine, but I wasn't uh, a musician or a musicologist. I didn't think I really had the right to write about jazz. But uh, then after I got a out of school, uh, my first job actually was as a film critic for The Hollywood Reporter, and, and uh, I felt that uh, jazz criticism was terribly lacking. Uh, a lot of the things I wanted to say and the musicians I admired weren't being written about. Or I felt I had something to say that nobody else was saying, and people would say to me, editors, you know, you know a lot about jazz, would you do a jazz piece for me? And finally I just bit the bullet. And, and left off film writing for, gosh, about or fifth, more than 15 years, uh, and then really committed myself entirely to jazz crit. Well, the first critic who, who sort of uh, made the veil drop from my eyes was Dwight MacDonald. Uh, MacDonald was a film critic uh, for Esquire in the early 60s, and uh, he was very funny and polished, and I really liked his voice. Uh, and then shortly after that, I discovered Edmund Wilson, um, particularly the two. I, I remember buying Axel's Castle and, and, and having a hard time with it because I hadn't read most of the writers in it. But then I got uh, uh, The Shores of Light, which is his collection of essays from the 20s and classics and commercials. And uh, Wilson really sort of set me on my path. There were a number of other critics at the same time that I was reading, uh, James Agee's film reviews. Uh, in jazz, the two critics I loved the most were Martin Williams and Dan Morgenstern. Um, I became completely obsessed with a turn-of-the-century critic who isn't read anymore, I don't know why, named James Gibbon Honecker, who published some two dozen volumes in a notorious novel about an orgy at the opera that called Painted Veils, which was once a bestseller, but I don't even think that's in print anymore. Uh, Max Beerbaum's theater criticism I love, Shaw's music criticism. Well, you know, I became completely uh, obsessed with reading criticism. Johnson was, that was a big thing in my life when I um, first started to read Lives of the Poets. And uh, uh, Matthew Arnold, Eliot's criticism. I ended up doing my senior thesis on Edmund Wilson, T.S. Eliot, and Hemingway as critics. Uh, so I, I, I think that path was pretty much clear for me at that point.